What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video on my channel and today we're going to be going through round 13's AFL feel good story. We know last week was the debut of the segment and uh, well it got a pretty reasonable response so thank you very much for that. Jack Nunes was obviously last week with Carlton's great escape against Fremantle after the siren with one hell of a kick from Nunes himself. But this week we're going to Darwin for a first gamer that's uh, taken the world by storm and we saw him in the draft and everyone was fully excited about how he's going to be um, brought into the system and the way he was playing for his football beforehand was sensational. So to see the debut of Irving Mosquito was sensational to watch, but there were a couple of honourable mentions as well. So let's get straight into this episode of the AFL Feel Good Story for Round 13. Yeah, the honourable mentions were, um, well, South Australian really, with um, Port Adelaide getting the job done over Hawthorne. Now, the whole game itself was definitely not a feel-good story. In fact, for me, it was actually probably one of the worst stories of the week, the way we got across the line against the Hawks. But it was the play at the end that is the feel-good story. And Zach Butters is becoming, um, becoming his own man, really, becoming one of the better players in the AFL. And that play at the end with, with Lysette's, Serving platter of a ball to Zach Butters is something that only happens once in every hundred plays, even probably more of a chance, you know, a one in a thousand. Just the way that tap ruck work was done is it's a dying act, it's a dying art in the AFL. So that was great to watch. The other one was from a crosstown rival at the Adelaide Crows. 200 games for Taylor Tex Walker. It's a great achievement. He's done so much for that football club. Oh, I found it a little bit funny that he only had three disposals. Um, that's just me being a Port fan, you know, you've got to take the piss every once in a while. So that was kind of funny, especially after everyone got onto Charlie Dixon's back and because he only had three touches a couple of weeks ago. But that's besides the point. Tex Walker 200 games is a sensational achievement and the way, you know, 0-13 Crows are going at the moment, he deserves a little bit more credit because he's been through quite a lot at that footy club. So kudos to Tex and the way he's gone about it. Sensational performance. But that gets me to the first gamer. All eyes on Irving Mosquito. What a moment. What a way to handle that moment. Wonderful. Irving Mosquito absolutely put on a show against Richmond. Unfortunately, the Tigers did win the game. Um, but to see a debutant take the world by storm with his amazing craft and his speed. Oh my God, the speed is sensational. His first goal, the set shot, was just beautiful that he kicked it. And you know we've waited so long for this debut. Um, and he finally comes out and he kicks a goal and everyone's around him, he's celebrating, he just goes off his nut. But the second goal, the second goal was the one, the way he took off from that contest and just absolutely obliterated all his opponents and left them for dead to finish that off and kick a goal. Oh, that's, he's gonna be a star. Long high ball forward, through comes Mosquito. Take all the ground, young man. On the left, he has kicked another one. Magnificent. Irving Mosquito. How good was that? Oh, man. You know, there is another shining light in what's been a pretty, pretty tainted 2020 season. We've seen a lot of debutantes. We've seen a lot of great talent come in to this season and actually take on, um, you know, Take the world by storm, and he's another one. He's another one for Essendon, another exciting prospect. I'm really looking forward to seeing him develop. But just the way, you know, I just he's a cult figure already. You know, we're all hanging out at the pub watching the game, and everyone's going off every time we kick the goal. Yeah, just it's just amazing to see that a, a young talent like Mosquito. The best part is his name's Mosquito, so he's a little little flying pest. Around. He's going to be a pest in Essendon's forward half for 10 year plus years, you'd say. So, just exciting times down at Bomberland with players like that. Uh, overall, you know, their performance wasn't as good as Richmond's in the end. But, feisty clash at the Dreamtime, that's for sure, up in Darwin. And I must say, 
that's the next part of this feel-good story. It was great to see Mosquito kick his couple of goals in his first game of footy and actually take the world by storm, as I've mentioned. But it was also great to see the Dreamtime being played in Darwin. And there's been a lot of talk about how Dreamtime should move from the G to Darwin. If you're looking at a business aspect, and I'll get this out of the way straight away, if you're looking at a business aspect, no chance of it happening. That's money down the drain for the AFL. But for a community aspect and actually promoting Indigenous Round properly and getting you know the messages across and actually learning the culture and you know, the community in itself, playing in Darwin is probably one of the most prolific places you could play to promote Indigenous Round. And I think even if it's not dream time, the game itself, there should be a game played in Darwin to celebrate all states and their indigenous heritage because the community itself got around that game. It was so exciting to see the big crowd that was there, the noise and the intensity around the game itself. That's ex as exciting as it gets. You need stuff like that to be around every single week because the passion that was there that night you could feel it. You could feel it coming through the TV. You could feel it at the ground. And everyone's saying, you know, let's, let's have it at, in Darwin. I reckon it'd be a sensational addition to Indigenous Round. You know, we've all got to celebrate um, everyone, every club's Indigenous heritage. The states um, that are participating, all their Indigenous heritage. Because Indigenous, Indigenous Round is just not about celebrating each club. It's about celebrating the actual culture in itself. And if we can get to all parts of Australia to actually promote this round as best we can and actually learn some more um, information and actually dive into it a bit more, you're ticking off so many more boxes, AFL, and I think if we can do that, uh, it'd be a massive... And Indigenous round will probably become one of the biggest rounds on the AFL calendar, so it already is, but I think it could be so much better, and I think... You know, to have people actually learn and go to the clubs. And obviously this is down the track without COVID and all that crap. But you go down the track, you learn about everyone's different cultures and where their family heritage lays. Yeah, that's that's exciting. That's That brings a whole new meaning to the round. And I think we can do that. And having Darwin a part of it, yeah, 100%. We used to play in Alice Springs, Port Adelaide. That was sensational. I always used, always used to love that we played in Alice Springs because of that. And I think that need, that needs to be brought back. Darwin was sensational on the weekend. Massive tick for the AFL. So, a massive feel-good story this week. Irving Mosquito, two great goals. And playing the Dreamtime game in Darwin. I reckon, I reckon we tick that off again, even if it's someone else playing there, you know? It's a feel-good story because I absolutely love... I actually enjoy football in Darwin. It brings a whole new different aspect to the game of footy. And a whole different conditions, a whole different climate. Yeah, massive tick this week for the AFL Feel Good Story. Well, everyone, thank you very much for watching this week's edition of the AFL Feel Good Story. Let me know in the comments below if you had a uh, feel good story for this week in particular, if it wasn't Irving Mosquito, but I think we can all agree that was a sensational performance and unfortunately Essendon didn't get the job done. But uh, a plenty of highlights for him and I look forward to watching him throughout the rest of the season and into his career a little bit more. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content coming your way across the rest of the season. My name is Anthony, and as always, can the air.